Alright, so here is a little device that I have been trying to get my hands on for quite some time. Um, and um, finally, uh, finally ended up lucking up at uh, last week's uh, auction house. Uh, they, had, uh, they had this little thing, <laughs> or this one, sitting on a table. And um, as soon as I saw it, I, I knew what it was and uh, uh, wanted a chance at getting it. And uh, so here it is. Um, this is a pilo tuner. Um, FM tuner. And um, pilot. Pilo Tuner Pilot Model T601. It's got five tubes in it, and basically it is an FM radio without a power amplifier or uh, power amplifier circuit or speaker. And um, this was used in the late 40s. Um, mid to late 40s uh, after the after World War II uh, FM started gaining popularity uh, although FM was invented in the 1930s um, it didn't gain popularity until after the war and I have uh, several uh, opinions on this and one of them is it's well the war brought a lot more money into people's houses and brought us out of the depression so uh, after the war and after we won the war it was uh, a uh, uh, you know kind of an advancement time and you know people were ready to move forward out of the depression and uh, FM was uh, another invention that people wanted to uh, to experience and uh, thanks to Edwin Armstrong we we did we were able to uh, to experience it so anyway, uh, this this uh, little pilot t pilot tuner is basically an adapter for an AM standard AM radio. So you could add FM to a radio, um, a regular AM radio. And how this works is it's basically it's an AM or excuse me an FM receiver, um, and it basically hooks into the uh, phono jack or you know if you have a, a phono or some type of accessory jack on your AM uh, radio then basically you just turn it over to phono or accessory or whatever you have and uh, this would go into the in input of that and you know play kind of like your modern day uh, you know mp3 players plug into an accessory jack uh, to amplify the sound through your car stereo or whatever you're using this works the same way and back in the day they actually had UHF adapters for some of the first TVs that came along and they were kind of the same deal they kind of plugged in uh, to the TV and was, you know uh, went through the uh, I think they went through the tuner circuit and was anyway they were they allowed you to to get reception through uh, UHF when there was only VHF. So anyway, this is uh, something that I've been trying to get a hold of for a while and uh, lucked out and won it at the auction house for uh, only five bucks. So nobody was interested in it. Probably didn't even know what it was. Uh, and if they did, they probably thought it was just some old radio. And where's the speaker at? The speaker's missing. But anyway. So there's actually quite a bit of information about these online and um, I will uh, post some information in the description about this. Uh, there's actually, <laughs> uh, somebody has set up a uh, pilotuner.com website. Uh, I'll post that in the description as well. Uh, to give you a little more background and information on this, uh, this little tuner. But my goal is, is I want to take it apart and see uh, what kind of condition it's in. And uh, I want to see if we can get it back in working order. Um, I've got a couple of radios around here with phono inputs. Uh, mainly uh, a uh, 
the big Firestone console that I have has a uh, an input in it, but it has some weird pin style jacks on it, um, and um, it's just it's like you know just the two. It doesn't have the regular RCA adapter. It's just got two little pins that plug into it for the phono input. So you know, with this being uh, just like regular spade connectors. We could probably get some kind of coaxial uh, hookup, you know, like some uh, 50 ohm or 75 ohm coax, and run it from here into the uh, to the back of the radio and see if we can uh, we can get anything out of it. But for now, I just want to um, go ahead and pull the chassis on it and uh, get in there. I've never seen the inside of this thing and. Uh, see what it looks like. I know the uh, dial glass needs to be cleaned up pretty bad. It's pretty yellow. And this, I put this knob on here. Uh, it, this is the original knob. It's got like a, almost like a ship wheel look to it. I wish I could uh, find another original knob for this one, but uh, uh, I've seen a few of these posted online and it seems like this is a pretty common problem with <laughs> somebody losing one of the knobs. Well, I got the back off of it and only to find we at one time have some residents in here looks like uh, some uh, dirt dauber nest in there and uh, man I'm glad those things aren't in there anymore but uh, let me uh, <laughs> I guess I'll knock that over in the trash can and uh, we'll finish uh, finish uh, pulling it out out of the uh, cabinet there all right, so basically I've just pulled the knobs off of it. There are two little felt washers behind there to keep it from scratching the case up. And I pulled that off and uh, uh, pulled the back off of it uh, and uh, got our uh, little nest of uh, former uh, inhabitants uh, out of here. And um, so now what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, take out both of these well, this screw and this screw is not there, but uh, you would normally <laughs> have a screw there. So we'll want to pull that screw out so we can get the chassis out. All right, so we got it out here. Looks like our uh, nest was on top of the transformer there. Kind of glad to see this is a uh, transformer operated set instead of a series string. So yeah, we got our five tubes there, and um, doesn't look too bad. A little bit dirty, but um, not too bad. It's just really in pretty good shape. Not a, not any rust or anything like that. So not a whole lot of dirt, considering how long this thing's probably been sitting up. But, uh, yep, it's just the uh, it's a regular 88 to 108 um, band, so that's a good thing. And um, so, anyway, uh, looks like we have uh, pretty much all of our original components under here. Looks pretty clean, though. Got our uh, original selenium rectifier in there. And um, looks like our original filter cap with... Uh, 40, 40, 20, and a 2 microfarad. So that's kind of interesting. Well, that's one of those can capacitors, so uh, with any luck it might be might be good. I'm not real sure. But um, anyway, um, so we'll probably need to replace all these paper caps, but um, what I might want to do is just basically try to hook it up and see if it works. And uh, kind of go from there and see what what it what it really needs. All right, so we have this uh, Firestone uh, console here, and on the back of it, it has a uh, Phono uh, FM uh, jacks. And um, let's see if I can show you here. It it has FM Phono. FM phono hookup and these uh, banana jacks seem to fit right in there so just for testing purposes I think I'll uh, go with just these two little wires here and uh, we can get anything else if we can get 
some sound through it then I think I'll just go with a uh, you know a piece of coax and some banana jacks like this it should work out all right so I have hooked this up and um, hooked it up to a few radios and uh, then hooked it up to the signal tracer and uh, we just have a loud hum so I'm assuming this this filter cap is probably going to be bad so I'm probably going to have to take that out and looks like with as many uh, uh, terminals as that thing has in it I'm probably going to have to use a terminal strip and rearrange the whole setup there and uh, replace that uh, these caps appear to only be 150 volts so that's um, looks like I'll be able to just go ahead and use the caps I've got with it being a transformer set I would have thought they would have been a little bit higher but not in this case so um, I guess we'll um, uh, replace that cap but first I want to check that selenium rectifier before I get too far all right and checking from ground across the positive side of the uh, selenium rectifier we have 57 volts and that's just completely unacceptable that's just way too low it <laughs> should be up above 100 and uh, uh, that's just not gonna work so that selenium rectifier is done all right so we got those uh, filter capacitors replaced and um, went ahead and replaced the selenium rectifier put a terminal strip there and a dropping resistor here which I think I may have to change this uh, I checked it and it's uh, running a little bit high about 133 volts and we need more like a 125 according to the schematic so probably end up having to uh, go up on that uh, I've replaced this here this the old carbon resistor the leg broke off of it so I ended up having to replace it with that it's a 470 I only had a 500 so we just went with that which is better than what it was reading it was in the 600 and something range so we got all these 40s replaced with 247s and a 20 with a 22 and then I had this little 2 uh, that runs the detector circuit in here it's for stabilization of the detector circuit and I just solder that right here there was a wire going from here over to it and I just soldered it here and then to ground seems to work okay so I hooked this up and it does work although it's not quite as sensitive as I'd like it to be but we'll uh, address that a little bit later on I think the um, I think I need to uh, get this taken care of here with this resistor I'll try to find the right resistor I used to I believe it was an NTE 125 diode it's a uh, multi-purpose rectifier diode up to a thousand volts and I believe it's two amps so anyway um, so we got that done and um, just need to find the right drop and resistor and we'll try to get it down to about 125 volts um, so other than that we need to I need to go through here and change all these other little capacitors and stuff these old paper caps and these right here this is a, a mica bomb here those are I think that's the across the line cap there so that'll need to go there and um, so uh, anyway, I'm going to call it quits for the evening and um, we'll pick this back up. Alright, so I started replacing some of these capacitors here. and Got the uh, mica bomb out of there and a uh, little paper capacitor that was over there. And um, some of these other ones I ran out of point zero one. Uh, microfarad cap so uh, I had a bunch of these disc and uh, so I replaced these with disc 
should uh, should work out pretty well and uh, those discs seem to hold up pretty good so um, these are just you know bypass just ground they're just going to ground cap so shouldn't be too big of a deal but um, anyway so uh, going through and kind of checking some resistors at the same time I still got to hook this one back up right over here with this disc cap over here but um, just kind of going through and checking and uh, uh, so uh, we'll turn you back on when uh, when we get to uh, another step here all right so I got all the capacitors replaced and uh, I've actually got it hooked up I've been trying it out I think I just knocked the uh, little alligator clips off the back of it so we'll connect those back up and turn it back on it doesn't seem to be working all that great it picks up but it doesn't really pick up it's not very sensitive I'm not sure if the tubes are weak or, or what's going on you have to turn the volume almost wide or pretty much wide open on the radio to get it to pick up Need some decent connectors. And that's wide open volume. Um, show that it should have been off. So I'm going into my own phone now, into settings, and, and that into station transmitter is right around the corner. So. It only picks up the strongest of the strong stations around here. Participating locations. Firehouse subs will donate a minimum of one million dollars in two thousand. Alright, so it works, but uh, I want to check the tubes and kind of go back through it again and see, you know, what's going on with it. It's not really picking up very good, and I don't know why. I settled on a 51 ohm resistor. That puts us right at uh, 125, 126 volts, uh, which the schematic called for 125, so we're right on the money there. Um, so yeah I just wanted to show that I uh, replaced a few resistors in here some 470 ohm ones were uh, crept way up this one back here behind this terminal strip here it went up to uh, over 1k so that needed to go and I've checked all the other ones and they're within 20% which is will be okay for this application so anyway, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, check the tubes now because, I don't know, this thing just doesn't, it's not quite as hot as I had imagined the receiver in it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's tube related or just, you know, uh, you know, uh, an old FM receiver. I'm not sure how hot these things are supposed to be, but it may not be quite as good as a modern day uh, FM receiver. All right, so checking our 6AL5. This is our detector tube, a little bitty detector tube. Oh, uh, let's see, reading about 700. Looks good. As far as emissions, at least. All right, uh, this is one of the three 6BA6s in this set. Uh, this one's used as a uh, RF amplifier. 
Well, that one's reading about 680, 690. So that's a, a strong tube. All right, and this is our other 6BA6 used as the first IF tube. And it's about the same, it's about 680. All right, and this is uh, the third 6BA6, which is the second IF. And it's coming in about 660, 670. So nothing wrong with that. I guess this thing has a decent set of tubes in it. Uh, I don't know. I got one more. All right, and this is a 6BE6. It's like uh, about 620. So that one's checking good. All right, so got it all back together, and seems like the tubes are strong. And uh, I don't know. I can't really find out. <clears throat> excuse me. I can't find anything else wrong with it. Um, I may try to do an alignment on it, but I don't think it's really that far off. It doesn't, you know, uh, playing with it by ear, it seems fine. Uh, seems peaked about where it's front, where it's supposed to be. But um, I'll have to break out the alignment instructions and see if I can do an alignment. But uh, I'm not going to include that with this video. We'll just uh, leave it at that. But uh, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Not a very good performer, uh, at least not where I'm at. Uh, I got a, a little dipole antenna there uh, coming out of the back of it, and uh, I would think it should pick up more than it's picking up. But we'll go ahead and give you a demonstration here. Got it on one of the one of the strongest stations here. Uh, the only other thing come in would be the PBS. The in air cases, we presented these terms of service and so on and so forth, but what's really going on still is the same old. <laughs> Got that station there that's a local. <laughs> And that's the volume all the way up. That's a local station there. They either blare in or whisper. That's a local. There's a local. And that's about it. So you got 95. That's about the only thing that comes in decent. That and the PBS down on 88. So. All right, well, uh, you know, you can't win them all, but uh, still a neat little device to to be able to add FM to a, an old AM radio. So anyway, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can tinker around with it and get it working a little bit better than it is. All right, so uh, I'm going to put this in there. I was uh, kind of puzzled why this thing wasn't really performing very well. And um, I remembered when I... Um, uh, replace the um, selenium rectifier um, I put a dropping resistor between here and here well now if you can see here but um, this is where the AC comes in it, it goes through and gets rectified and then your this red wire is going to go down and, and it goes to a dropping resistor that I changed from a 470 to a 500. So in the process of uh, upping this resistor and upping this resistor, some of these components back here weren't getting quite enough voltage. I went through and checked 
and right here well I've taken this resistor completely out of line because I went up on this one so I just wanted to see what would happen if I just took this out of line just take that out of line and just leave this the way it was so normal voltage right here should be about 98 and I'm getting about 98 there normal voltage is about 98 here I'm getting 98 and let's see 90 about 92 here I'm getting 96 And let's see that's supposed to be what is that 98 that's a little high but they're all kind of within they're not under because I was getting about 10 volts low I was getting about 88 on this one and they're kind of floating around it's, it's kind of crept up a little bit so I may go with a uh, you know something like a 20 or 22 or something here instead of a 51 drop that down a little bit or something but um you know as this as this thing warms up i guess the the voltage is kind of up and down a little bit but it's nothing serious uh you know too high or anything so and i hooked this thing up and it seemed to be performing a little bit better um still i don't think this is a hot performer at all i just i really don't um i've gone through here and checked you know pretty much all these resistors and everything i mean i've checked everything and there's only 15 resistors in this whole thing anyway and i've gone through and checked and these things are you know the ones that are the old ones that are in here are not off by much so I think the best thing to do is just kind of either leave this out or lower the resistance um, on whatever I put in here. I could go back over here and put another resistor to add on to the dropping, you know, to drop it down more. But I don't want to go like I did before because I had too little voltage and you know, if these tubes aren't getting enough voltage, this, this thing is not going to perform like it's supposed to. Uh, these uh, these circuits are designed to run at a certain voltage. So, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. All right, we got. Uh, I decided to run this thing through this uh, little uh, chair side radio here. It seems to have more amplification to it, so. Uh, it helps uh, bring in a little bit more a few more stations uh, again this thing is not an excellent performer by any means I guess it was just kind of something just to put local FM's on your on your radio historians have traditionally used these records to examine the lives of the slaves all right so you know that's about all I can do with it I've done about all I can do with it Now I've checked the voltages are all normal all the uh, now they are after I've uh, made a few changes uh, I'm not really getting much better performance out of it. I've you know got it hooked to a radio that will amplify it a little bit better But as far as uh, sensitivity, it's not very good. So, you know, it is what it is uh, It picks up the locals. Uh, I guess I can't really ask for much better than that, you know uh, um although i would like better than that but uh, anyway uh you know it does work and anyway uh appreciate you watching and at least we got it working again so uh thanks for watching and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing uh if you're not already and uh drop a comment down below and let us know what you think thanks for watching